What's up guys? You want to learn how to weld any truss on any axle? This video is going to show you how to do it. So check it out. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Dan, this is Warpaint JKU. This is going to be the next step in our Project Maple Leaf one ton swap leaf spring JKU, whatever you want to call it. All right. So if you're just new to this video series, you may want to go check it out. And that's right. I did say leaf spring JKU. Go check it out. But anyway, today we're going to weld a truss. Okay. And this happens to be a rear axle, but don't worry about that. Okay. We're going to talk about how it's different with a front axle and I'm going to show you. Um, but this axle, it happens to be a corporate 14 bolt axle. Um, we're putting a truss on this for a couple of reasons. Now, some of the reasons you might put a truss on your axle might be because you're trying to take a axle that's maybe a little bit weaker and make it a little stronger and able to handle larger tires. A truss will certainly give those axle tubes a lot more strength. Another one of the reasons why you might want to use a truss is to relocate all of your suspension bracketry, right? If you're taking an axle that was never designed to be under your vehicle and then putting it under there, you're going to need to make sure that the springs and the shock mounts and the control arms or the spring perches and all that kind of stuff is in the right place. A swap truss kit will help you out. Now, I'm not going to go into the detail, but we don't need extra strength out of this 14 bolt axle. It's going to be plenty strong for our JKU on leaf springs with 40 inch tires. The reason we're putting a truss on it isn't to locate the suspension because it's completely custom. No one makes a kit to convert a JKU over to leaf springs, but we are putting the truss on there because it's going to make it a little bit easier for us to install something called an anti wrap bar. That's going to help us prevent getting excess wrap and, and flex that we don't want to get out of those rear leaf springs under accelerations and, and things like that when we're off road in those kinds of environments. Now, factory vehicles don't have anti wrap bars. What they simply do is they put one shock on the rear of the axle and then they move the other shock on the other side to the front. If you've ever noticed that in the back of pickup trucks, it's very common to see. The reason they do that is because when you step on the gas, that pinion in the front, and we're going to get to talking about pinion angle, but this pinion wants to rise a little bit when you step on the gas. Well, having that shock compressing and this shock extending helps fight that rise with a normal application. But we're not normal, okay, on this channel. We're obviously putting, like I've said before, leaf springs under a JKU. So we need to make sure that we are set up and going to keep this axle and our rear drive shaft happy while we're bombing it over some big rocks. But once you're at the point where you're ready, you're going to want to make sure that you take your truss and put it on top of the axle, right? Mock it up, make sure it fits. Maybe mark the spots where the truss is going to contact the axle tubes with something like a chalk pen or a uh, permanent marker, and then come back later, remove the truss and grind those clean. So you're down to bare metal in order to prep for welding. But in this video, I'm not showing you how to weld. So we're going to skip most of those steps, but there is a real important one about the inside of the truss that we're going to talk about. Let me show you. Now this is the inside, right, of our truss. This is what we'll never ever see daylight. Uh, and it would be really hard to get in here and paint this um, once we have it installed on the vehicle. Now, if you look closely, this looks a lot different than that. And yes, I did already paint it. Now, if you do that with regular spray paint, when you apply your welder to it, we all know regular spray paint it's not all that heat tolerant and it will burn right off and flake away, leading your truss to rust over time because it's bare metal. But in comes Steal It. Now, I don't represent Steal It, okay? They're not sponsoring this video. It's just a great product, so I'm going to tell you about it. It comes in two colors. It comes in this gray color that you saw on the axle tubes a couple seconds ago and on the inside of that truss. It also comes in black. Steal It is a weldable spray paint, okay? That's right, it's weldable, which means you can paint the axle, don't have to clean it off, 
uh, if it was bare metal originally. You can paint it with steel it, you don't have to grind off that paint, and you can weld right to it, and it's perfectly fine. Now, one of the first things that we're gonna do, like we said before, is basically take our truss, set it on top of the axle, check for the contours and the fitment in the way that our truss was made. Now, our truss was made by Artec Industries. Uh, I've always had a good experience with Artec, but there are a lot of different companies. And we basically just wanna check the fitment, where it's gonna be contacting the axle tubes, make sure we don't have to grind anything out so that all of this stuff fits very nicely and that we have a nice little gap in there so that we can actually weld properly. As you can see, Artec Industries does a really good job of bending and machining this truss so that it fits nicely and we don't have to do a ton of prep work in order to prep it and get it on the axle. Now, like I said a minute ago, this isn't a swap truss kit. A swap truss kit would not only sit over the top of the differential, but it would extend down the axle tubes and you would have places and tabs to, to key in components for your spring perches and things like that. We don't have that because we're doing this completely custom. This truss is just meant to hold our third link up here, which is basically gonna function as our anti-wrap bar. It's gonna, we're gonna have a piece attach up here, we're gonna have another one attach lower, and it's gonna stop the axle from moving under, under load and stress and flexing those springs in a way we don't want. But it would be very, very important, okay, if you were doing a swap truss kit to make sure that this truss was lined up correctly in relation to the pinion angle. So let's dive in and talk about that. All right, so here we are underneath war paint, and you can see that I have the same corporate 14 bolt over there on the rear axle of this rig. And that diff is actually pointed up at the back of the transfer case, and it's actually like a degree or two lower, okay? And that's because when you step on the gas in a normal environment, your diff is gonna wanna rotate up a couple of degrees, making that drive shaft perfectly in alignment with your transfer case. That's what you want, okay? So the key would be to come out to the rig that you're putting your stuff in. Take a measurement of that angle on that drive shaft uh, and make sure that you are at that angle and then lower it a couple of degrees and get it set up like that on level ground in your garage on jack stands. Once that's done, you would then wanna take your truss and set it up so that your truss is perfectly perpendicular to the ground, right? A 90 degree angle to the ground facing straight up in the sky. That way your springs are sitting in the right position at the right pinion angle, and it will help you avoid that spring bend when you, that you commonly see on lifted vehicles with stock axles. But at this point, our truss fits very well on the axle, so it's time to start burning it in. As you just saw, we tacked the truss into position on the axle tubes. What you wanna do when you do that, is you basically just wanna put a tack in the front corner and then a tack in the opposite corner, things like that, to make sure that the heat, when it, when it pulls on the metal, it doesn't pull it out of alignment. Um, I tacked it up here where the two halves of the truss come together, same thing on the back side. Now at this point, I'm actually going to lay some beads and weld this truss to the axle tubes first. Welding it to the center section is a completely different process. We're gonna do that another time. But you can warp your axle tubes. It's a lot harder to warp them on a one-ton axle because the tubes are a lot thicker and the steel is a lot stronger. But on something like a Dana 30 or a Dana 44, especially if it's a front axle, you can do it pretty easily. So here's what you do. You wanna move around on the axle to balance the heat and let other areas cool themselves down. So what I'm gonna do is basically finish weld this little section here, then jump to the opposite corner, do the same little section over there, give it a couple of minutes, come back, do the back side, do the other side, and just keep doing that and skipping around the axle from side to side to keep the heat spread evenly and allowing it to cool down in between. Now that our truss is securely on the axles, right? You can see our beads here. We have the same thing over here, right? Now that, now that our 
trusses on there. I'm actually gonna come up top. I'm gonna start laying some beads in here just to kind of give the truss a little bit more strength as we start to get into heating the rest of the axle tubes uh, and, and as we weld further and weld the truss to it. Again, I wanna let those tubes, even though it's a one ton axle, cool as much as possible before I threw too much heat into one area. We're gonna have to rotate the axle and weld down here to the axle tube. We're gonna have to weld in this gap. We're basically gonna have to weld everywhere again on the axle tubes and even connect this across. So being that we've already welded on each side twice, now it's time to skip to the top of the truss, let those tubes cool. Your normal truss is gonna be made out of mild steel. Your diff, as we said before, is made out of cast steel. Your tubes, though, are also made out of mild steel. So when you weld your truss to your tubes, it's very simple. When you weld it to the cast, there's a couple of different ways of doing it. You can basically preheat the cast with a torch, weld it, and then wrap it up in a fiberglass blanket, take it out, unwrap it in 24 hours, and usually you're good. The reason you would have to do something like that, and we're not gonna do it that way, we're gonna do it a much faster way, but the reason you have to do something like that is to monitor the heat. The problem with cast is that it heats and cools at a different rate than mild steel. And if your truss or your cast get too far apart from each other in temperature, your weld will crack and it won't be any good. So here's what we're gonna do to weld it and here's what we're gonna do to cool it down. We're gonna grab a map gas torch, okay? Now, I like to use map gas, that's the yellow tank. You can use propane, that would be the blue tank, but map gas burns hotter, it heats up faster. And we are going to heat the area of the cast that we are going to weld first. So I'm gonna start here just because it's easy to get a good camera angle. And we're gonna heat this area up until it's about 300, 350 degrees. Once it's at that temperature, we're gonna weld from the cast to the steel, just like we did on our axle tubes and everywhere else. Preheating this allows us to get better penetration into it because again, it heats at a different rate than our mild steel. Once it is welded, we will monitor the temperature with an infrared thermometer and reheat the area that's cooling too quickly constantly go between the mild steel, the weld, and the cast steel. Make sure it all cools down nice and evenly and never gets about 50 degrees or so farther apart from the other section. Once it's all at about 150, 175 degrees, we'll just let it cool naturally, normally. The welds won't crack, they'll be good to go. It takes way less time than welding it, wrapping it in a blanket, and then going back to finish welds on other parts of the axle later after you wait 24 hours. Now, like we said before, we're gonna monitor it, constantly reheat the area that's cooler to make sure that the temperatures stay fairly even as the entire thing cools itself down. That's basically all there is to it. You would do the same thing on top of the truss gets a couple sides on the other side. It's not necessarily important to weld the entire piece of it, but you definitely want to get a good section of it to give it its strength. This is definitely a part that you don't want to skip. At this point, our weld is cooled down. I'm going to move to the other side, get that done, and then we'll wind up welding in the rest of the actual mild steel on the truss itself. Now guys, important note here. You'll want a diff cover on there to make sure that you are not getting any little pieces of weld spatter into your new diff. You're also gonna wanna make sure that everything is clean. But on a rear axle, there's no inner, there's no inner axle seals. So it's real easy and you don't have to worry about putting that heat into that area of the axle and ruining them. On a front axle, you're gonna wanna be careful about it, potentially have to change your inner axle seals. If you heat them up too much, they can melt. They will no longer seal to the axle shaft and you'll lose your diff fluid. So just be aware of those things, but guys, this is not something that's overly difficult for you to do in your own garage. I know people always freak out about welding cast to mild steel, and it's truly not difficult. If you take the time and you're patient, you do it little bit by little bit, you cool it down slowly over time, 
and do it right. right. There you have it. I'm gonna get back to this axle. I'm gonna finish it up. But at this point, you know what you need to do in order to weld any truss on any axle. Whether it's a swap truss aligning it with your pinion angle or it's just a bridge truss like this and you just wanna use it for maybe a little added strength or in our case, some leaf springs on a JKU and an anti-wrap bar. Anyway guys, thanks for, the, uh, thanks for the follow and the support. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Get on over, check out the Instagram at WarPaintJKU and uh, I'll be in touch with you. Stay tuned for the next video.